I will, yeah, I will mute you. But if there are real problems with sound, let me know. So we're going to start with some quite, I say, simple things standing up and then we're going to move into a few sequences and then we're going to come back into standing and maybe do some slightly more involved things. So I'd like you to start um, on your mat, just sort of towards the centre of your mat and bring your hands into prayer pose in front of your chest. So, and have your feet a little distance apart. So just start by settling and arriving. So you could for a moment close your eyes, see if you can feel the contact of your feet on the floor, feel the contact of your hands in front of your chest, and just feel yourself in standing. So it's just this idea of arriving, arriving before we start to move. <sighs> you could have a couple of big sighing breaths. So let the breath come in through your nostrils and exhale through your mouth with a big <sighs> sigh. And then you're going to open your eyes. And as you exhale, just a normal out breath, you can take your arms down and then up. Let a breath come in and then start to swing your arms in front of yourself. That's it without, especially those of you who've got more than <laughs> two, one person, you, um, make sure you're not hitting your family member, swing your arms in front of yourself, you're crossing your arms in front of your chest a few times. Good. Once, twice more. And then let that go, let your arms hang. And I'm just turning side on because what I'd like you to do is bend your knees a little bit and just see if you can give your pelvis a bit of a wiggle. So Mel, I was sort of thinking of you with this, but it's something I got from Chloe the other day. So bending the knees, giving the pelvis a wiggle, just seeing if you can release your lower back a little bit. And then sinking into your heels, let your knees straighten but not lock. Bring your hands back into prayer pose in front of you. So again, let a breath come in, and as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Let a breath come in, drop your shoulders away from your ears and swing your arms again. And again, crossing the arms in front of your body. And then what we're going to do here is you're gonna swing your arms all the way to give yourself a hug with your right arm on top. So if you put your right arm on top, you just don't have to think about anything. You could put your hands on top of your shoulders. I find that's the most relaxing thing for my arms. And then what I'd like you to do here is without possibly, without moving your pelvis, just turn your shoulders and your ribs a little bit from side to side. So it's not a huge movement. We're just moving a little bit from the waist up. And perhaps just once, twice more. And then pause in the center, release your arms, give them a little shake out. Bring your hands back into prayer pose in front of you. And then again, let a breath come in. As you exhale again, take your arms down and then up. Drop your shoulders down away from your ears and then swing your arms again, crossing the arms in front of you. And then this time, you're going to give yourself a hug with your left arm on top. And then settle in this place. And again, like I've done, you can I find the most relaxing thing is to have the hands on the sort of ball of the shoulder joint and then you can just sort of let the arms relax a bit more. This time what I'd like you to do is close your eyes and just see if you can feel a cycle or two of breath move through you. So close your eyes, let your breath come in. Let your breath leave you. And again, feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath leave you. And then release your arms, give them a shake out. And we're gonna move forwards into a few forward bends. And the first one I'd like you to do, you're going to slide your hands down the fronts of your thighs and pause for a moment with your knees a little bit bent and your elbows resting on your thighs and see how it feels to be here. And if this feels fine for your lower back, then you can release your arms and your head all the way to the floor. 
I don't mean that. I don't mean that your head's going to touch the floor. You're just letting it drop in that direction. Let your knees be as bent as you like and try to feel floppy in your upper body. Let a breath come in. <sighs> Big exhalation. And then as we roll back up into standing, you're going to slide your hands up the fronts of your legs. So on and out breath, slide your hands up the fronts of your legs so you come all the way back up into standing. And once you're in standing, what I'd like you to do just a couple of times, maybe with one hand on your belly, is to let your gaze come up. So you're just at very beginnings of a little standing back bend. Your pelvis comes forwards a bit and you look up but you're not pushing it, okay? So a couple of times, looking up, let the pelvis come forwards. And then we're gonna go back into another forward bend. This time, you're gonna slide your hands down the backs of your legs. So you start with your hands up in the sort of crease beneath your buttocks. And then as you go forwards, let your hands slide down the length of the back of your legs. So this is the bit, obviously, that has to stretch out as we go forwards and when we may feel quite tight. So down into your forward bend, you might end up with your hands on the back of your calves, the back of your ankles, the back of your heels. Again, you can bend your knees as much as you like. Let your head go. <sighs> hands somewhere on the backs of your legs, good. Have a big exhalation in that forward bend. And then with your next exhalation, roll back up into standing, sliding your hands up the back of your legs. And this time when you end up back in your forward bend, have one hand on your belly and then take one arm up. So we're just going to do this couple of little standing back arches, not going very far, but what's it like to let the pelvis come forwards to look up to bring one arm up? And you're going to swap arms, so just do it on each side. So swap your hands over, look up, let the front of your body open a little bit, your pelvis comes forwards. Okay, and then one last time we're going to go into a forward bend. This time, bring your hands around the base of your skull, interlink your fingers, and roll down with your arms in this position, gathering your elbows in. And again, what I quite like at the moment is bending my knees a lot so my chest is resting on my thighs. You can keep your hands in this position or you can release your hands to the floor. If you like doing your little weeping willow movement where you're trailing your fingertips sort of side to side around the fronts of your feet, you can do that. So if that feels good. Or you might just want to stay in the forward bend, your chest coming close to your thigh. And you can, even, if you're just staying in the forward bend, you can even sort of catch your hands around the back of your lower legs, if you like, or the backs of your knees. Good. Very nice. And then just keep your arms hanging down as you roll back up into standing with one more exhalation. So sinking into your heels, exhaling, rolling back up into standing. And I think just have a little shake out at this point. Shake out your legs. And in fact, we're going to do um, a little, this one, where we swing our arms and let the whole of our body move. We just come to this sort of easy movement, swinging the arms. You're not trying to keep your pelvis still now. You're letting your pelvis move. You're letting your feet move. Just trying to feel the whole of your body in movement. So I've got, in a moment, one more little thing we're going to do in standing, and then we're going to start to move down onto the mat in a few sequences. So a couple more times, swing your arms to the left and to the right. Good. And then what you're going to do is, I'm just turning around so you can see, you're going to bring one hand onto the base of your skull, like where we had it for the forward bend. The other hand's coming onto the back of your pelvis. And actually, this is just sort of an awareness thing, really. What I'd like you to do now, you can bend your knees a little bit if you like and wiggle your pelvis, but you could close your eyes here. And I just want you to imagine those two points are 
and we're moving away from each other. So as the back of your neck lengthens and releases, you're also thinking about your tailbone dropping down towards the floor. So we're imagining, yeah, those two points moving ever so slightly away from each other. So the curves through the back of our spine can lengthen out. So have one more cycle of breath on this side, then we'll swap the arms over. So let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then release the arms, give them a little shake out. And yeah, do shake your legs out as well if you like. And then swap your hands over. So bring the other hand onto the base of the skull. And then the hand that was on the base of the skull is on the back of your pelvis. Again, if it's helpful to bend your knees and give your pelvis a wiggle, to really help try and imagine that your tailbone is dropping towards the floor as the base of your skull is ever so slightly sort of length, moving upwards. So the back of the neck's lengthening out. <sighs> the tailbone's dropping towards the ground. We imagine those two points moving away from each other. Have one more cycle of breath there, letting the breath come in. Letting the breath leave you. And then release your arms and shake everything out. And then come towards the backs of your mat. So you're going to settle your feet, a little distance apart at the back of your mat and bring your hands into prayer pose. So we're going to be moving down to the floor through a forward bend and dog pose. So we can start here, letting a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Drop your shoulders away from your ears, let a breath come in, feel long and tall, and then curling down into a forward bend. Have a breath or two in your forward bend, and then when you're ready, start to walk your hands forwards into dog pose. And remember, it doesn't matter if your heels come up, they're probably quite likely to come off the floor. Just walk to a sort of length that feels good for you and dog, and then have a few breaths there, bending perhaps one knee at a time, a little bit of walking on the spot. Breathing, letting your head go. <sighs> good. And then from here, you're going to come down onto hands and knees and settle yourself on hands and knees. So you've got your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. And you're going to come to some cat movements. So rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine down to the floor and seeing how these movements feel today in your body. So these are quite simple movements. So it might be a good idea to close your eyes so you can really feel what's going on in your body. So when we round our back to the ceiling, that's a chance to particularly lengthen out the lower back if it's feeling tight. When we dip our spine down to the floor, we're moving in the opposite direction. So a couple more times with those. Rounding and dipping. And then see if you can pause sort of somewhere between the two. So in a neutral place. And then you're going to do your tail wagging. So you can imagine you have a tail, a dog's tail, or also you may think maybe dogs wag their tails quite quickly, or a fish's tail. And you're, yeah, so you imagine you'll have a tail and you're trying to wag it or swish it from side to side. And then we can do the similar movement by moving our lower legs from side to side. So swinging both. So your knees stay where they are, but if you swing your lower legs from side to side, that will take your pelvis from side to side. So you could try that. Little fishes, sometimes it's call it. And then go back to tail, doing the tail wagging. So moving your pelvis in the same way without the lower legs. Okay, let's um, take the weight off our wrists and hands for a moment. So round your back to the ceiling and rock your hips back over your heels into child pose. And settle down in child pose. 
for a few breaths. Let your elbows come to rest on the floor. It's nice to have your forehead on the floor if possible. Letting the breath come in, letting the breath leave you. Or in kneeling, of course, if you prefer. And then from child pose, we're going to come back onto hands and knees. I'd like you to do just perhaps a couple of cycles of your cat movements to, but use them to find your neutral place. So come onto hands and knees and round your back and dip your spine just sort of two or three times to remind yourself of these possibilities and then try to settle somewhere where you're in, in fairly in neutral with your spine. And then we're going to do our fox balance. So from here, you're going to lengthen one arm forwards and the opposite leg back. And you can either point your toes away from you. I think I prefer to point my heel away from me. I feel a bit more supported in my lower back. And you're going to have a few breaths here. So how does it feel to be supporting the arm and the leg, opposite arm and leg, otherwise you'll find it, probably find it harder to balance. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you, feel long from your fingertips to your back heel. Then come down and swap onto the other side. So the other opposite pair of arm and leg. And again, you can be extending into your back heel or your toes, or you could sort of point your heel and your toes and have a little play around with that. But all the time you're trying to breathe yourself in this long straight line from your fingertips through to your back heel. Maybe one more cycle of breath, let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. Come back onto hands and knees and then just sit back either into kneeling with your bottom on your heels or into up kneeling if that's um if that's better for you and what we're we going to do here oh yeah you're just going to shake out your hands so either here or here shaking out your hands and then we're going to come back through dog pose and a forward bend back up into standing and then back down into another little sequence so Come back onto hands and knees, tuck your toes under, exhaling, rock your hips back over your heels, pick your knees up off the floor, come into dog pose, have a few breaths in this dog pose. <sighs> Bending your knees as much as you like, seeing how this second dog pose feels. Letting the head go as much as possible, that's it. Letting those shoulders widen across your upper back, Aditi. That's it, good. Well done. And then walking your hands in towards your feet. So you come into a forward bend. And then here, you're going to touch the backs of your hands together. And you're going to start to roll up into standing. So touching the backs of your hands together, trailing your hands up the front of your body, rolling all the way up into standing. You can have a breath in and then as you exhale, take your arms in a big circle back into prayer pose in front of you. And then we're going to go down and do some different things on hands and knees. So hands in prayer pose. Let a breath come in. As you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Feel long and tall, let a breath come in and then exhaling down into another forward bend. <sighs> Have a breath or two in your forward bend, letting your head go, feeling the weight sinking down through your heels. Very nice, lovely. And then big hand prints, walking forwards into dog pose. So each time we come into dog pose, maybe we feel a bit better able to release tension, to soften a bit perhaps around the shoulders, to be able to focus on our breathing a little bit more, to just feel 
the breath coming in, the breath leaving us. And of course, bending the knees as much as we like. And from dog pose, we're coming back onto hands and knees again. And then on hands and knees, settle yourself on hands and knees again. So you've got your um, wrists under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. And then we're doing this little, sort of a little twisting movement where you bend one elbow and you look towards the arm that isn't bending. So you're letting one elbow bend. It probably doesn't touch all the way to the ground if you keep the other arm straight. And if you keep your shoulder over your wrist. So just from side to side, bending one elbow and then bending the other. And then the next time you bend your left elbow, stay there and slide your left hand forwards a little bit on the floor and keep supporting yourself through your right arm. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then slide that left hand back under the shoulder and then bend your right elbow, keeping your left arm straight and slide the right hand forwards a little bit on the floor and have a couple of breaths there. Feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath leave. And then just for a moment, sit back over your heels. You can be up or down and come to swinging your arms from side to side. So you can either be sitting down and kneeling or in up kneeling, swinging your arms. That's it, just feeling maybe you're moving a little bit between your shoulder blades. And then we're gonna come back onto our hands and we're gonna come on into plank pose. So we need to come towards the front of the mat, shoulders under the wrists and lengthening one leg out behind you and then the other leg out behind you. And yeah, just seeing how it feels to come into plank pose. So we're trying to feel this long straight line from our shoulders through to our heels. We're trying to be able to breathe here. Um, not always the easiest. We don't want our bottom to be, so in plank pose, our bottom is not sticking up in the air like dog, but nor is it hanging down to the ground like face up dog. Um, whenever you've had enough, let your knees come back down to the floor, round your back to the ceiling, rock back into child pose for a breath or two. or kneeling if you prefer. And then once more, we're going to come through dog pose into a forward bend, roll back up into standing. And then we have one final sequence to do. So you can come back onto your mat, plant your hands down, tuck your toes under, let a breath come in. As you exhale, rock your hips back over your heels, pick your knees up off the floor. So ending up in your dog pose. And again, how does dog pose feel? Can you settle there? Can you breathe? <sighs> Are you starting to feel a little bit more, a bit more yourself maybe in dog pose? Good, so a few breaths in dog. Yes, Aditi, that's looking nice across the upper back. Very nice, really letting the heads go. And then starting to walk your hands in towards your feet, back into your forward bend. Letting your head go in your forward bend, all of the weight in your feet, touch the backs of your hands together. And then as you exhale, roll up into standing, trailing your arms straight up the front of your body, straight up to the ceiling, breathing in, exhaling all the way back and around into prayer. 
So one last time, we're going to move down through a forward bend and dog pose to the ground and do a few different things down there. So feet a little distance apart, hands touching in prayer pose. Feel your breath come in as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Let a breath come in, feel long and tall. And then rounding down into your forward bend. And have a breath or two here, just feeling your spine tumbling forwards, your weight sinking down, rooted down through your heels. And then one hand and then the other walking forwards into dog pose. And again, the sense that each time we come into dog, perhaps we can feel a bit more at ease. Feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath leaving. And in your own time coming down onto hands and knees. And then from hands and knees, what we're going to do is all come into this up kneeling. And then we're going to do a variation on a twist we did last week. So from up kneeling, you're going to step. You might need your hands on the floor. You're going to step one foot forwards. So basically you're ending up, you're not in a lunge, you're not that wide apart. You've got your front knee over your front heel and then your pelvis over the back knee. So if you remember from last week, this is like when we did the one where we stepped one foot up onto the chair or the sofa. And then basically we're turning towards our front leg. And we're trying to keep the shoulders relaxed, the back arm relaxed. You could have your hand on the back of your pelvis. This hand comes onto your front leg. <sighs> Dropping the shoulders down. Now you can from here, if you like, try to fold forwards, but stay in your twist. So this top shoulder has to stay back. What you can do is this, this arm sort of slides down in front of the bent leg. So you fold forwards over your bent leg, but without losing the twist. So the back hand stays on the back of your pelvis. Or well, that top arm could even reach up towards the ceiling, but that's not quite so nice. So you can try that and then you can come back upright and just see how you actually kept in your twist. And then you're going to untwist Lean forwards over that front leg and walk your back leg back. So you now come into a lunge. So sort of step, you know, yeah, tuck your back toes under, walk your back leg away. So you've still got your front knee over your front heel, but now you've got that stretch through the back. The, yeah, the back, the front of the back leg thigh. <sighs> and you're gonna have a few breaths in your lunge, just settling down in lunge. Focusing on that feeling of opening through the front of the back leg thigh. Your hands can be resting on the floor however you like. Fingertips, knuckles, flats of your hands. Have another breath or two down in your lunge. And then from lunge, we're going to sort of ease back out by untucking your back toes and yes sort of moving back so we keep our chest close to our front thigh we bend the back knee more we look back behind us so we're easing out of our lunge and then we're going to come back into that up kneeling and you're going to step the other foot forward so i'm just going to turn around otherwise i won't be able to see you for a while so back in this up kneeling place step the other foot forwards so in this place where the front knee is over the front heel and the pelvis is over the back knee. Which it's not the easiest place to be steady. So those of you who did it last week standing and um, standing on the sofa, it maybe was steadier because your foot was on the floor, not your knee. And then you're turning towards this um, front leg. <sighs> Try to keep your shoulders relaxed, your back arm is floppy or resting on the back of your pelvis. <sighs> And when you settle the shoulders down away from the ears and feel, feel stable below the waist, which is not always easy. And then you can try that folding forwards where you, you're keeping the twist. So the top shoulder has to stay sort of back and up. And you're sliding your front arm down in front of your knee, maybe. 
You could even try taking your top arm up. I don't know. That's, I don't particularly like that. <sighs> That's the possibility. And then when you've had a couple of breaths, forwards come back upright. And if you lost the twist, just come back into the twist for a moment. <sighs> and then we're going to untwist. We're going to fold forwards over our front leg. And then tucking the toes under, sort of walk your back leg away from you. So you end up in a lunge. So now we're coming to feel that stretch through the front of the back leg thigh. <sighs> we're just trying to give the weight of the pelvis to the floor, support ourselves through the hands. I mean, some people in this like to take their hands off the floor onto their front knee. Um, so if you prefer, you can do that. But um, I always feel I just need a bit more support of, of my hands as well. So see what you think. And just a few breaths in lunge. So lunge is really where we come to focus in on our breathing. Particularly if it feels a bit of an intense stretch, you want to feel the breath coming in, the breath leaving you. And then we can ease back out of this by untucking the back toe again and Shifting our pelvis back so the back knee bends more, the front knee leg straightens out a little bit. We're looking back at the front leg. <sighs> I think from here, yes. From here, come onto a long hands and knees position. So your hands are further forwards than your shoulders. And what I'd like you to do from here is a little bit of rocking back towards child pose, but also rocking forwards. So we're starting to move towards face up dog. So letting the weight come into the arms and the pelvis comes forwards. And do this a few times, just forwards and back without pushing either, <laughs> without pushing anything too much. So you're not necessarily going that far into your face up dog. And then what we could do, so it might be that you want to, for a moment, sit back, take the weight, sit back in kneeling, up or down kneeling, just give your hands a little shake out. Because then I thought we would use our tail wagging movement to move forwards and back. So when you've me up here, give your hands a shake out. So when you've done that, you're going to come back onto this long hands and knees. And by swinging your pelvis from side to side, you're going to move forwards and back. So towards face up dog and back into child pose with this movement where we're swinging our pelvis to the right and to the left. And um, I was just thinking then, that I, I always think this is a summer movement. <laughs> I, think I first started doing it, I was camping a couple of years ago, but it's now still nice to be doing it in the middle of the winter. So the pelvis swings from side to side, we come towards face up dog, we come back into child pose, we keep it comfortable, yeah? When we're in face up dog, the pelvis is hanging, we're supporting ourselves through straight arms, shoulders down away from the ears. So if you like, you can do one more face up dog and then just have a few breaths in child pose before we come back up into standing. So one last face up dog, if you like. And then a few breaths in child pose or kneeling if you prefer. And wherever you are in child pose or kneeling, just really coming back to you feeling the movement of your breath in your body. So wherever you are, have another cycle of breath, feeling the breath coming in and expanding within you, feeling the breath leaving you. And maybe one small, one more cycle of breath.
and then back through last time dog pose forward bend this time as we roll up into standing you can go all the way into a standing back arch if you like dog pose enjoying your dog pose if it feels nice enjoying your forward bend if it feels nice And then when you come in your own time to roll up into standing, so touching the backs of your hands together, if you like, when you take your arms up, rather than just going up, you can also go back a little bit with both arms. Come to your, yeah, standing back up. You might need to bend your knees to let your tailbone drop. And then from there, you might also just want to fold into another forward bend before you come back up into standing. We could, we could be here all day, couldn't we? So yeah, if you want one more forward bend and then settling in standing. So in your own time, when you arrive back up in standing this time, just settle in standing with your hands in prayer pose. And then as we did earlier, let a breath come in as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. Go back to swinging your arms. And this time I want you to swing your arms all the way into eagle arms so you could be hugging yourself and then on into this one and um Zach I'm presuming you know this one if you're not and then <laughs> your mum will show you so on into your eagle arms <sighs> have a couple of breaths there letting your shoulders drop away from your ears have a look at your arms I didn't say which arm to have on top so have a look at your arms see which arms on top because we're going to release the arms and we're going to do the other side so let the arms go, have a little shake out. You can come back to hands in prayer pose, exhaling, take the arms up, swing the arms. And then if like me, by this point, you've managed to completely forget which arm was on top, you're gonna to try and remember giving yourself a hug. Coming on into eagle arms on this side. And if you're like me, you're thinking, okay, yes, <laughs> I've completely lost the plot, which arm was on top, hopefully you, Remember, and then have a few breaths here. Okay. And then release your arms, give them a little bit of a shake out. So we're going to do a couple of standing balances now. Um, so settle down, have a look at your feet. So feet a little distance apart. And I'd like you to, let's see, who are we going to decide? Yeah, you're going to decide which foot you'd like to stand on. So you might want to close your eyes. Obviously, we're going to do both sides, but you can choose which foot you'd like to start with. So if you close your eyes to see, is there a foot you're more drawn to standing on? And then open your eyes and you're going to take that arm up. So whichever foot you're going to stand on, take that arm up towards the ceiling and then start to shift your weight into that foot. And then we're going to come into the one we then catch the top of our foot for our trouser leg. So this position. And then your top arm is going to come down onto your breastbone. So we're keeping this sort of quite easy to start with. Well, I hope we're really reasonably easy. Good. Letting your knee drop down to the floor as much as possible. You can come back to that sense we had earlier on of that sort of distance between the base of the skull and the tailbone. So even in this pose where we're lengthening a bit through the front of the body, we want to stay long through the back of our body. Good, have another couple of breaths here. You might feel your chest up to your hand moving as you breathe. Okay. So 
we'll come down, we'll have a little shake out, we'll do the other side. So a little shake out, arms and legs. Okay, settle both feet down again, maybe look at your feet. Take the other arm up. So we're shifting our weight onto the other foot now. We've taken that arm up. Everything is shifting onto that side. So then it becomes quite easy to peel the foot off the floor we were just standing on because we've shifted our weight onto the other foot. We've caught our trouser leg or the top of our foot or our ankle. Let our knee drop to the floor, bring our hand onto our breastbone. And then to see, can we settle here? Settle. Quieten, maybe. The foot's probably always going to be sort of moving, shifting a little bit as it adjusts to help support the weight of the body above. Let your shoulders settle. Feel the movement of your breath in your body. Come back down and have a shake out. So we're going to go a bit further with this, um, this one now. So uh, maybe I'll just show you. From, we're going to use a mudra. And when we come back to this place, the hand catching the foot and the hand on the breastbone, we're then going to reach our leg back and our arm forwards. So what I'd like you to do is you're coming back to stand on your first foot. With that hand, you're going to touch your thumb and your index finger together. And you're going to bring your hand. So with the thumb and index finger touched, you're going to bring that hand onto your breastbone. And then we're going to shift our weight onto the foot. And we're going to catch the other foot. So our starting point is we've got our hand on our breastbone with the thumb and index finger touching. We've shifted our weight onto our standing foot. We've caught the top of the other foot. And then from here, we start to reach forwards with our hand turning your palm up and reach back behind you with your foot. And you might feel that you tilt your body forwards a little bit if you like, that's fine. And see if you, in your peripheral vision, you can be aware of your front hand and you can feel that contact of your thumb and index finger in the mudra, the Arna mudra. And can you breathe? Whenever you've had enough, come down. Little shake out of arms and legs. And then side two. So again, your starting point is the other hand now in the mudra, thumb and index finger touching, feet side by side, hand coming onto your breastbone. <sighs> Shifting your weight into the foot you're going to stand on, which should be the same as the hand in the mudra. Catching the top of the other foot or the trouser leg. Settling yourself here, and then when you feel steady, reaching forwards with your arm, turning your palm up, feeling the contact of your thumb and index finger, and reaching back with your foot, away from your bottom. And then breathing, maybe, would be nice. Feeling the hand reaching forwards, the foot reaching back. Beautiful. Oh, very lovely. <laughs> very lovely to see. Well done. Thumb down. Have a bit of a shake out. Um, we're going to come down to the floor through one last forward bend and dog pose. I thought you might quite like to do your one leg dog poses um, because they, they're a bit like that um, standing balance we just did. So if as we come down, if you feel like doing your one leg dog poses, you can do. So either with your raised leg bent or long. So in your own time, roll into a forward bend. If your lower back feels it would benefit from going into a squat, by all means, you could pop down into a squat and then come back up into a forward bend. I was just thinking that my lower back would quite like that. You could pop down into a squat, you could come back into your forward bend. 
And then you could walk your hands forwards into dog pose. Let's see how this dog pose feels. We've done quite a few dog poses, so maybe it's been, hopefully it's been reasonably pleasant and enjoyable. And then you can see how does it feel to lift one leg if you like. You can reach into your heel, you can roll your pelvis, that top leg can stay long, or you can bend your top knee, drop your top foot back behind you. We'll obviously do the same on each side in your in your dog pose if you like. So that's it. That's nice. Good. Good. It's entirely up to you. That's it, Zach. Yeah, you can copy what, what Mel's doing. So you can take one leg up, you can either keep the leg long or you can then sort of roll your pelvis, bend the knee back behind you. And from, from there, you're going to settle down into child pose or kneeling and just quieten down for a moment. So wherever you've settled, feel the flow of your breath within you, or that sense of maybe returning to the breath. So obviously when we're doing perhaps the more <laughs> dramatic things, maybe we get caught up in <laughs> the feeling of the pose and our attention is not so close to our breathing. And then when we come back to somewhere quieter, we can reconnect with our breath. And we're going to take this feeling of being connected to our breathing down onto our belly. So when you're ready, you're going to um, slither forwards onto your belly. And you can have one hand on top of the other if you like, and your forehead resting on your hands, or your hands sort of just above your head on the floor. I don't mean above your head, on your head. So settle down onto your belly. And yes, there's, there's a few things we can do to settle. There's wiggling your pelvis. There's, I know the one some of you like, that's the one Mel, yes, you Rosie, bending your knees, taking the soles of your feet to the ceiling, tilting your feet from side to side. And obviously if you do, you want to feel quite settled here. So you're, your head needs to rest down, either on the back of your hands or on the floor. It could be the side of your head, it doesn't have to be your forehead. So we're just, we're just seeing what can we do to settle on our fronts. We are going to move in a moment, but be able to settle and breathe. So once you've given your legs a, a wobble around, a little bit of a rock, bring your legs back onto the floor and just see, can your legs be sort of heavy? That looks nice, that good. Can your legs be heavy and relaxed? And then all I'd like you to do here is to see how does it feel to then, as you exhale, sink down into your forearms and elbows and lift your head. So your head is either lifting off the back of your hands or off the floor. And at this point, it's probably, yeah, it's probably good to have your, your gaze looking down at the floor, you know, so your, your, your head isn't turned to the side. So just a few times, how does it feel to lift the head? sinking down into the forearms. So what we're trying to feel as we lift our head is that our, the muscles in our upper back are getting involved in the movement. It's not just the back of our neck tensing up. The movement actually travels much further down, sort of down between the shoulder blades. We feel the muscles there getting active. And then I'd just like you to have a little breather. You could either stay on your belly or you could fold back into child pose for a moment because I want us to um, do a little bit more on the belly. So be wherever's comfortable. So yeah, basically, if you need to come off your belly, fold back into child pose because we're doing a few more movements on the belly. And have a couple of quiet breaths. Okay, what are we doing? Okay, yes, yeah, quite encouraging you can stay there. Good, okay, now. On your belly, bring your arms down by the side of your body. And your starting point is, I want you to see, can you lift your head 
Now you haven't got your arms to sink down into. So how is it to lift your head and try and feel those muscles in the upper back? And just try that a couple of times. Because then you can use your arms in a different way. So now, as you're lifting your head, you're going to reach up and back through your hands. So they're a bit like wings. This is locust pose. So as you lift your head, as you exhale, can you reach your hands sort of up and back behind you in the direction of your toes and then come down again. And you might find once you've lifted your upper body and your arms, your feet also want to come off the floor. Very nice, Nigel, good. Yeah, so we, so in this one, you want to be in this sort of long, gentle curve. If you feel discomfort in your lower back, you're just trying, probably trying to lift too high. So you can try a couple more times, exhaling, lift the head, reach up and back with the hands and see if the feet, if lifting the feet helps. If lifting the feet makes it worse, don't do it. <laughs> And when you've done that once or twice more, just have, very nice, good. Good, lovely. Very nice. Good. And then from there, <laughs> you'll probably be ready to now roll over onto your back. And at this point, if you're feeling that you want to put, we are going to do some moving on our backs. But um, if you're feeling that you want to put anything, any warmer clothes on, like socks. <laughs> so if you want, yeah. And when you roll onto your back, I just want you to, yeah, do what your body feels it would like. So when you've arrived on your back, what would you, what would your body like? You know, there's a... <laughs> There's a few things. So yeah, roll onto your back and see what does your body feel like doing. Yes, exactly. Yes, so it's really nice. There's a whole <laughs> variety. And so all the things I can see people doing are the sort of things I would like to do. So either lying with my knees bent and my feet standing on the floor, that's really nice after being on the belly. Folding the knees into the chest is also really nice. So you can fold your knees into your chest, a little bit of rocking from side to side. And then, probably not for you, Nigel, but for other people, we're taking the legs up towards the ceiling and giving the legs a bit of a shake out and the arms. Okay. Otto thinks it's time for dogs to join in now. So. And then what I'd like you to do from having done all the sort of things that you feel like you want to do on your backs is to settle down with your knees bent and your feet standing on the floor. So knees bent, feet standing on the floor. Feel the weight of your head on the floor. And then come to letting your head roll to the right and to the left. That's nice. So roll your head a couple more times from side to side. And then what I'd like you to do is pause in the center for a moment and use both hands around the, the back of your head. So interlink your fingers around the back of your head and lift up your head and gently lengthen out the back of your neck. And then place your head back on the floor again and let it roll a little bit more from side to side. That's nice. Good. Good. So we've just lengthened out the back of our neck a bit. Lovely. That's nice. Yeah. And then from rolling your head from side to side, find a comfortable place to settle the back of your head on the floor. And then start to tilt your knees to the right and to the left. That's it, let the knees tilt one way and then the other. And keep this comfortable. 
So it's entirely up to you. The knees can go a little way or the knees can go a longer way. Whatever feels better for you. And it might be that you find your head is moving at the same time in the same way, in the opposite way, that's also fine. If your head's not moving, that's also fine too. Now, pause in the middle and take your feet wider now. Take your feet as wide as the edges of the mat. This is the narrow edge of your mat. So feet as wide as the mat. Good, so feet as wide as the mat and then come back to tilting your knees from side to side. That's it, ah, oh, nice. And so go from side to side a few times with the feet like this. Good, yes, exactly. And then what I'd like you to do is, and it might be if you have a cushion to hand, you might want your cushion under one of your knees. You're gonna let the knees come all the way down towards the floor on one side and leave them there for a few breaths, that's it. And then you can let your head roll in the opposite direction to your knees. Good. And have a few breaths there. That's it. You don't have to use a cushion, but if you know, you know if one of your knees is hovering a bit and it would help the legs to feel heavy and relaxed. <sighs> you could have a couple of big sighing breaths here. Think about those legs dropping down on one side. Feel that where your head is rolled to, to the opposite shoulder, that shoulder is heavy. Feel the breath come in, feel the breath leave you. Good. And then you can come back to the center. You might want to do a bit more rocking with your legs and then we'll take the legs down to the other side and stay. So it's up to you if you want to do a bit more rocking from side to side before you take your legs down to the other side. So again, when you're ready, bit of rocking if you like, and then let your knees, let your knees come down to the other side. Let your head roll in the opposite direction. <sighs> and heavy, heavy shoulder. So the head that you no, the shoulder that your head has rolled towards is heavy. <sighs> and your knees are heavy, dropping down to the other side. So we have this sort of sense of maybe opening through the front of the body and the weight of our body falling away in two directions. And have a couple of breaths on that side. Again, if you've got a cushion to hand and you want to put the cushion under one of your knees, you can do. And so stay as long as you like in this second side of the twist. And then whenever you're ready, we'll come back to the center, center and just we'll settle down quietly just to finish with a little bit of breathing. So again, this is when you should, this is when you could put on a blanket or socks. Um, yeah, just make sure you're gonna be warm enough. We're not gonna be here that long. So I thought we would do just three cycles of buzzing breath to help us settle. And I know that I always find that this breathing is um, nicer when <laughs> I'm not on my own, but um, we are together even if virtually. So when you're settled down and comfy. So for our buzzing breath, our Brahmari breath, we let a breath come in through our nostrils and we exhale by making a buzzing sound through our mouth. So let a breath come in. Bzzz. 
And then again, so let your breath come in through your nostrils and then another buzzing breath. And one last time, letting your breath come in and then buzzing with your exhalation. And then just settling down. And we're just going to have a sort of minute or two of lying quietly. We say lying quietly so the body is quiet, but sometimes this is when our mind then starts to get a bit busy. So it's fine, you know, to let thoughts flow in and out of us. But um, if we start to get too sort of fixed on anything, then maybe just gather, gather your attention back to feeling the movement of your breath in your body wherever the breathing feels most clear. You can also feel the weight of your body on the ground. So I'm just going to be quiet now for a minute or so, and let you settle, be with your body and your breath. Just notice where your attention is now and if your mind has drifted somewhere completely away from your body and your breathing, just gather your attention back in. And I'm going to ring the singing bowl three times so you don't need to do anything else apart from lie there. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm going to.